One of the NFL's classiest players ever, Warwick Dunn, has returned to the Bucs after playing some of his middle pro years with the Falcons. The running back is well known for his philanthropic work in tribute to his late mom. But in his new book, Running for My Life, Dunn describes his attempts to reconcile her brutal death. ESPN.com's Greg Garber has the story of Dunn's remarkable and often painful journey. To get to Angola State Prison from Baton Rouge, you drive right by St. Francisville. It's a small, quaint town on the bluffs of the Mississippi River. St. Francisville is also where my mother was born in 1956. And it's where my mother was buried in 1993. Warwick Dunn's mother, Betty, was his best friend. Just after midnight on January 7, 1993, the Baton Rouge police officer was providing security for a convenience store manager. They were driving to a bank deposit box when they were ambushed by three men. Police arrived at this Jefferson Highway convenience store about 12.15 this morning to find mystery, confusion, and one of their own near death. Corporal Betty Smothers died at Our Lady of the Lake Hospital about a half an hour later. It was one of those uh, relationships that it wasn't just a mother and son. We were like one. I just knew when she passed away that I didn't feel like no one or anything could ever replace that. She called him her little man, and whenever I'd asked him about his mother, he would always say that that was his soulmate. Malin Brooks was Dunn's youth football coach. Since the age of nine, Dunn has considered Brooks to be his mentor. What was the effect of that murder on Warwick? Devastation. Um, it affected all of the children in a different way, but um, it, it almost broke him. It almost broke him. Dunn, the oldest of six children, was thrust into the role of father figure at age 18. I sacrificed my own happiness. I sacrificed making sure that other people in my life came first, because work didn't come first anymore. In 1995, the three men were convicted of Smother's murder. Two of them were sentenced to death. Here's Dunn, and he breaks it down to the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20, and he is in for the touchdown, 39 yards for Warwick Dunn. While Dunn focused relentlessly on football and supporting his family, he lost sight of a precious and fundamental concept, himself. I was so depressed. I was content for being in the four walls of my house. I was content not going outside. I can watch TV all day long, watch the reruns. More than a decade after the murder, Dunn sought counseling. Eventually, the notion of confronting his mother's murderers emerged. For so long, I felt like these guys have taken so much away from me. And this one incident has made me so hard and, and, and so closed that I, I, wanted to, I wanted to continue to progress and move forward. If you have this type of anger within you, I know that the best thing to do is to confront confront it face to face and then um, um, dissolve it or let it go. And that's how Dunn found himself on the road to Angola, Louisiana in October 2007 to confront Kevin Brumfield, the convicted trigger man in the killing of Dunn's mother. We rode down the road probably 10, 15 minutes and we put up to the gates. Hearts pounding. Bah, 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 bah. It was just, it was crazy. As Dunn was escorted to death row, questions resurfaced that had tormented him for 14 years. Why? What was the purpose? I mean, were you really in need? I mean, why that store? I mean, why, if you wanted to rob, why couldn't? Why did you have to open fire? Why didn't you just go up to the car and say, "Give me the money"? I mean, just so many, so many questions. Despite his shackles. Brumfield shook Dunn's hand. They spoke for nearly an hour. Brumfield denied killing Dunn's mother. 
to not hear him admit to doing it was uh, was tough. But you know, he got teary-eyed also by the statements that I made. How this, and I just really expressed how this one incident has really affected so many areas of my life and how, how, how I was searching for answers. When he reacts that way, with tears, what does that say to you? Um, that I, I think it's the right guy. He did it. I mean, why would you really care? I didn't ask him the question, did you do it? But he just said it wasn't him. If you didn't do it, and I don't know why you're here, but I, I forgive you or whoever did it. I think that really showed him that I was going to be coming at peace with everything. Afterward, Dunn traveled to St. Francisville, to the cemetery where his mother rests. He was free, he told her. He was finally free. She already knew what I just accomplished of, of going to see the guy who shot and killed her. It was something that I would cherish, but I know she's proud. She's proud of the fact that I hadn't gone crazy, I hadn't went down the wrong path, that I'd done something positive with my life. Wow. Uh, thank you, Greg. In 1997, Dunn established Homes for the Holidays, a program tied to his foundation. The goal to provide the initial down payment on a home for a single parent, a tribute to his mom, Betty. Uh, this week, Dunn spent Tuesday visiting and assisting two more families with a home purchase. That put the grand total to 80 homes for the holidays, 80, 80 families that Dunn has given new hope to. The work done is quite a man now. We'll be back.